Hello, everyone. I'm Edith Thomas, and we are back with another episode around the U. And today, we are stopping off at Burnett Middle School, and I have two amazing people here with me. I have Andrea Korb. She is our, one of our elective teachers and Title I coordinator, and I also have Sean Pat- Paterno. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have said it a little fancier <laughs> last time. <laughs> but he is also our interim principal. Guys, how are we doing today? Great, thank very you. Very well, very well. Awesome. Well, thank you for sitting down with us and letting me and my cameras and the people at home watching get to know you just a little bit more. So, Andrea, I'll start off with you. Why don't you give everyone a brief description of your professional background? My professional background, so I've been here at Burnett for five years. I'm one of the cycle teachers, um, leadership and financial literacy, and recently the Title I coordinator this past year. Um, I also taught at Union High School. I taught in the business department, marketing, and computers, um, and I was also a student. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I, got, I read that in my notes that you're a student here. <laughs> Only a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, just so recently. <laughs> and Sean, why don't so, you tell me about yourself? So my name's Sean Paterno. I'm the, uh, one of the interim principals here at Burnett Middle School. Um, I actually started in Union in 1998 as the athletic trainer. Um, from there, I made the move over into the classroom as a physical education teacher. Um, putting some time in, I actually became the attendance coordinator at Union High School and from there, I became a vice principal at Union High School, and then I ended up down here at Burnett with uh, the administrative team. So we've been here for a couple of years, Burnett, I would say. Yes, so I've been here, I think we've Same both been you. here about five years now. It's mm-hmm. going to be, yeah, I think it's five this years. This is the start. fifth year. Yeah, this is the end of the fifth year. Yeah. Nice. So we've, we've got to work with high school, and we've <laughs> got to work with middle school. Do we have a favorite, I should ask? I don't think I have a favorite. I love, there's things that I've loved about both. My very first year teaching was actually not in Union. I taught middle school and loved it. Mm-hmm. When I made the switch to high school, I loved it. Okay. When I came back to middle school, it took me a minute to adjust because I was talking to them like they were 15, Correct. 16. I was like, oh, wait, they're 11. <laughs> they're much younger. <laughs> um, but I do love both. Oh. I really do. Awesome. Yeah. And then what about you, Sean? Are there me? any key differences? So, that you, you know, see? let's see. Uh, I've actually, since started working here in 98, I am not from Union, Mm -hmm. um, but started working here in 98. I was actually here as a student trainer in 94, and I learned about Union, you know, sports and the academics. So my favorite part is it's really just the town. Mm -hmm. I've really fallen in love with just the the, the community, um, the parents, the kids, you know, the students and everything. I mean, I feel like no matter where I am, I'm happy mm-hmm. because, um, you know, my thing was I was at the high school. Mm-hmm. So I realized, you know, that both middle schools are feeders to the high school, right? So as the high school vice principal, you're looking and you're saying, okay, you know, we're struggling here with certain things. Now I'm in a different seat, mm-hmm. right? So the best thing about my job now is I know where they're going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's great for me to know that. So, you know, with these programs that we're going to talk about and mm-hmm. some things that Ms. Corb has done during the year with our um, academic coach, we're making a pivot so that when they get to the high school, they're all ready to mm-hmm. go. So my thing is, I, I it doesn't matter where I am, I love the town, and I think that if we can make this pivot here, it will help pivot the high school. So that's that's really what my passion is. I love that. I've been talking to teachers today, principals, superintendents, and I think that's the key thing here. This program and many other programs after yes. school or summer help prepare the students to move on to their next chapter. Yes. And I think that's exactly what you guys are doing. So let's touch on these summer programs. How long have they been in place? We've so, been here for yeah. five years, mm-hmm. so we've been doing it for five years. Oh, nice. Yes. That's great. Okay, and what activities or what lessons do we have in place for these summer programs for the students? So uh, let me just, so the beginning, when we first started, when we first came in, COVID hit, mm-hmm. right? So the, the pandemic hit. So we did um, online virtual, which is hard just in the classroom alone. So summer was even harder. I bet. But really what it was is to try to give the students a chance to learn a little bit during the summer, mm-hmm. right? What we've learned through different studies is there's a slide, right? We call it a slide. Okay. That when we leave in June, some of the students slide backwards a little mm. bit, right? So if we could, you know, involve them in a little bit more academics during the summer to prevent that slide from happening too far, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a great thing to do. And that's what we've been trying to do with the summer program. And we've offered, you know, we've offered SEL, Mm -hmm. we've offered art, we offer our academic um, classes, and we try to, um, we try to run them so that 
it's not such a grind like this school day. Mm -hmm. So we may play, you know, some different things. And I think Ms. Corb could probably speak a little bit more to some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we try to get them excited about learning. Right. So whatever it is, whether it's ELA, math, art, you know, just to have that love of learning, mm -hmm. the excitement about learning, take away a little bit of the fear mm -hmm. of learning, and especially for our rising sixth graders that are transitioning into a new school, mm -hmm. giving them some connection, some, some familiarity, so when they come here, they recognize a teacher, they recognize a classroom, and it just, it makes it for a more comfortable learning environment for them. Um, and I think just keeping them engaged, even if it's just, you know, a few weeks here and there mm -hmm. makes a really big difference. I would, I would agree so myself yeah. knowing back when I was in school, I don't think, I think I attended a couple of summer programs, but nothing like this. Like no. they were probably, maybe I'd say a couple of weeks and half day schedules, I believe. So how, how are the schedules here? Are they half days as well? How long do they run? So so my program for the 7th and 8th will be half days. We're mm -hmm. running from July 8th to the 18th. It's really not as long as we want it to be, but for, for this year we ran into some, some, snu some snags. Yeah. Excuse <laughs> me. Um, so, you know, what we're going to try to do is provide for the students that we're having come in. We're going to do, we're selecting a group of students to come in and hopefully try to help them move forward and mm -hmm. they don't slide back so much, like I said. But what I'd also like to do for everybody that's out there, um, you know, the district offers so many things that the oh. students can do away from school, yeah. right? We have an IXL program that the, kid, that the students can get on every day during the summer, nice. right? We have Tutor Me, which is a, a program that we use, which is a live tutor. Mm -hmm. So there may be some parents out there who are, you know, maybe trying to push their students or mm -hmm. even trying to get them to see what's coming up next. They can go to Tutor Me and say, you know, I'm taking seventh grade English next year, you know, can someone help me out with mm -hmm. some of the things that may be going on, right? Mm -hmm. There's Khan Academy that they can use, which is free of charge for anybody, not just in union, right? And my thing is, you know, I always tell sixth grade students, I try to tell seventh, eighth grade, I don't need five hours of you on the screen, right? What I need is I need 15 minutes of math and 15 minutes of reading, and that's it for the whole day. I'd rather them be out, mm -hmm. right? running around, mm -hmm. being, a, being, being a child, yeah. right? experiencing that, those life experiences, we can't duplicate them here, right? But if they can get online in the morning, I always say this to, this to the students, nothing really starts till 11 o'clock anyway, right? So if you get up and you're having your cereal, instead of maybe getting on a chat or something like that, just give me a few minutes on math, a mm -hmm. few minutes on reading. And what's great is if they get a math problem they're struggling with, they could use the other platform of two to me, and they could use that for, nice. for help. So there's always, you know, there's, the, the district has really made it very accessible mm -hmm. for our students to try to get ahead, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that, you know, with the way the world is, we need, like Ms. Corp said, we need students that are willing to take that risk, mm -hmm. willing to, you know, push themselves a little bit to try to, you know, motivate themselves, right? Mm -hmm. That intrinsic motivation, I think, is something that, you know, is going to benefit them for the rest of their lives. For sure. Definitely. So I know you um, mentioned it already, just to reassure me, uh, math and writing, but what other classes or programs do we have in person? For the summer? For the for summer. The, for the rising sixth graders, we're going to have ELA, math, social studies, science, and art. So it's well-rounded. It's yes. anything yes. that they may have struggled with in, in the school year Correct. that they could further mm -hmm. get assistance with. I absolutely love that. Yeah. That's amazing. So, again, how do people go about signing up, um, registering? Did we pass a deadline? No. So <laughs> mine will be going out today. I figured instead of me sending it out sometimes and it gets lost, I think having this out there with this information, mm -hmm. the seventh, eighth grade program, the parental form will be going out this afternoon. Okay. I'll send it to all up rising seventh graders and rising eighth graders. And for our viewers yeah. watching mid-May. Right, so yeah. they should see, it will be in an email. So they should see an email. It will be with my name on it and they could just open it up. It's a form just to read through it. Mm -hmm. You know, because we have some, um, we're going to have people coming around the program, some programs, you know, taking pictures and stuff like that. So we want to get consent gotcha. from, from everything and to make sure the parents know what's going on. Gotcha. And Same goes. for the rising sixth grade program. So the, the email will come from me mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it will be um, kind of an inf information and consent yep. the same, um, just to say it is a kind of going to be... Um, 
it says in the form that not everyone is guaranteed a spot. So as right. quickly as you can fill it out, the better. Right. Um, because we only have so many slots right. available. And just to be sure, these are also free. Yes. Yes. Correct? Yes. yes. Pro free yes. programs for the summer and for your students to learn. And like you said, that's the key thing, not to slide back. Correct. Because you take off this time and you're like, ah, I don't have to worry about school until <laughs> September. And then September comes and you're like, what did oh, I forget? Wait. Yeah, I forgot yeah. what happened yeah. back in June. Yes. So that yes. makes a lot of sense. Guys, and if I could add, too, yeah. for the rising sixth graders during the, our time together, we're going to do a building tour yeah. and get them comfortable with being in a new building. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah, because they're traveling from a different... Mm -hmm. Right, and that's why, you know, that's why we split that. It used to be them all together. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, part of the administrative team said, you know what, these are fifth graders coming up to a brand new school. Mm -hmm. It's a lot bigger. We are the second biggest building in the district as oh, wow. of right now, right? We have almost a 1,000 students. So we want them to come in and be comfortable with the building. Definitely. And we've also changed it. You know, sixth grade is only on the first floor. Okay. So they move. The only time they would go upstairs would be for an elective, whether it be Spanish or art. Okay. But most of the time, they're on the first floor. So that their transition is moving amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. We keep seventh and eighth up seventh and eighth grade upstairs so that we it's just an easier transition for Makes them sense. to be comfortable and you know like miss corp said having them here during the summer it sort of takes that that little bit of panic away mm -hmm. hopefully yeah. and gets them ready for the building definitely i love that yeah. aspect of the tour because they are traveling from and i remember when i was a kid i was <laughs> like wait big school what's <laughs> going on so i love that, that yeah. that's amazing guys thank you so much for sitting down thank with you. us no i problem. feel like this is one all of them have been super informative <laughs> but this is one that i really feel like will definitely help and is informative to not only our students but our families as well yes. nervous sending off their yes. fifth graders now to sixth yes. grade mm -hmm. so yes. this was great yeah. thank you so Good. much no problem thank, thank you very much for, thank for you. having us of course i might come back and <laughs> ask you to come back in my please house please come on. <laughs> I'm, we're, we're willing to always talk please <laughs> definitely and thank you everyone at home for watching this has been another great episode of around the U. am Tina thomas and i will catch you at our next school